Welcome back to another episode of Sip the Tatter Film. Today we're going to try to tackle one of the most elusive players in the NFL. We're going to see what the Ravens possibly, maybe, hopefully, can do to contain Travis Kelsey. Now I know Kansas City Chiefs have reloaded with speed. Xavier Worthy, the fastest man to ever run in the combine. Win guy Hollywood Brown, we know how fast he is, former Raven one of the fastest men in the NFL. And they've gotten healthier at, you know, some of the other positions. They, you know, brought back Miko Hartman, who's four three something when he ran the combine as well. So they're they're looking to reinvigorate their down the field passing. But the guy that makes this thing all go is still Travis Kelsey. And we saw what the first half of the AFC championship game how he exploded on us. And my thing is what can we do to slow him down? I've taken a look at the AFC Championship game, a bunch of games over the course of the season. And when looking at numbers, like, he's so efficient. So efficient. Pretty much when Pat throws it to him, he catches it. He had two games where he was under 75% uh, catch efficiency. He, the first game he played because he set out the first game. And another game where he had 66.7. It's like, pretty much if he throw it to him, he catches it. His spatial awareness, as well as Pat's spatial awareness, they're on the same wavelength. But what can the Ravens do to try to um, slow them down? Well, let's take a look at what we didn't do in the AFC Championship game first, and then we'll get into what I think we can do to try to slow them down. Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. Roll that intro. <laughs> Right, let's take a look at Kelsey and Pat. And they their spatial awareness is just crazy. They play off each other so well. It's, it's like they know where each other's going to be, especially anytime you play zone. It's like they know each other like the back of their hand. And this little, you know, just trying to see what coverage we're in. We're in man, just get it out there quick. Hopefully they can get one or two yards off that. This play right here is is not bad. It's not bad. This is the touchdown that Kelsey caught. You know, in, in man-to-man versus Kyle Hamilton. And this is not bad coverage. You know, he, he made the catch. Night, hell of a back show to throw. Hell of a catch. And, you know, sometimes good offense beats good defense. Because this is great coverage by Kyle Hamilton. Great coverage. But I, it's almost like when I use the Steph Curry analogy sometimes. You can guard him at a three-point line. He can't get past you, but then he steps back and hit one of those long threes. Did you play bad defense? No. He just played bad offense. I think that's what this is right here. Just look at the sticky coverage by Kyle Hamilton. Hamilton's all over him. Right there, look at that. Hamilton's all over him. He just, they just made, you know, better catch, better throw. And that happens, but we'll come back to that. Just, just put a pin in that play right there. On this play here, like we were in a set and had pretty good odds up top. 2v2. Their two receivers are two receivers. They don't have a numbers advantage. Kelsey comes in motion. We don't really adjust. So now they have a numbers advantage. And they're just going to play numbers ball. You take it out there and throw it. Just play numbers ball. And so by the time you get down here to make the tackle, I can got four or five yards. And if I make somebody miss, I'm going to get a few more. Nothing extravagant. Just playing numbers ball. That's him and Pat being on the same page. They understand, look, okay, they ain't going motion. I'm going to just throw it out there then. Because we got numbers advantage. It's this simple. Simple football. Taking what the defense give them. Again, anytime they're in zone, he just finds the open spot. Look, look, just like he don't have to run full speed. He's just jogging off trying to read. Trying to read the defense. Trying to read the defense. Trying to read the defense. And Pat just waiting. Pat just waiting because he's either going to get up in there or get out there. Pat just waiting on the break. Either one. He just waiting on the break. Pat's looking at him the whole time. As soon as he stuck that foot in the ground to determine where he at, falls out. And, and Pat threw it behind him so this guy can't come up and either pick it or, or big hit him. One, just, 
It's good football, man. Good football between these two. So I'm going to get to what I think we should do here shortly. Just want to show you. See, just look at the spatial awareness. Just look at it. Just going to open space. You just run the grade. Them being on the same page. Just running the grass. That's it. Just running the grass and sitting down. Like zone stuff. It's like they've seen just by every kind of zone coverage you could throw at them. And they understand each other so well. And I'm kind of alluding to my point here in a minute. See, look at that. Just simple. He's going to eat zone stuff up. And when I was going back and looking at those clips, like all those games where he was 8 for 9, 12 for uh, 11 for 11, which was us, 12 for 13, um, 8 for 7 for 9, he was terrorizing zone coverage. Terrorizing zone coverage. That right there. This next one. As they decide to cut grass. More zone. And even on this one right here, you'll see Ro peek at him, but he just don't go instantly. And that little hesitation for him not going allows them to fit that ball in there. That little bit of hesitation allows them not to fit that ball in there. Crazy, right? Just get, just watch the end zone view of it. And watch Ro peek over there at it. Watch roll right there. Roquan zero. Ball snap. You see roll peak. He don't fully go. He takes a look back at Mahomes. And that look back at Mahomes cost him. Cost him the reception. If he, if he go right now, if he look and go right now and don't peek back, he might can get a hand on it. Might. Or at least jar the ball out. That little peak cost him. Go to this one right here now. And they got a little rub on this one, which is going to happen. Sometimes something like this is going to happen, but it's up to Kyle to kind of avoid this type of stuff. Now, let's get to my main point. Let's go back to the second play. This is the touchdown. This is the touchdown right here. Now, this is what I think we have to do to Kelsey. Because we have one guy that can kind of play him man-to-man. -man. I think we have to play man-to-man and accept, accept whatever happens with, with Kelsey. Because if they have to make catches like this all game long, I'd rather them make seven or eight of these than him to get those 13, you know, intermediate zone catches. If they got to make catches like this all game long, so be it. Take my lump. Play him in tight man coverage and, you know, do whatever you do with these other guys back here. Whatever you're gonna do with them, do it. But let this matchup right here be determined by all pro versus all pro. And is Kelsey gonna get some? Yes. Yes, he is. Kyle gonna win some? Yes. But I figure you you don't let you don't let him have the easy eight, nine, ten catches just by running versus soft man all day. Is he gonna get some versus zone? Yes. But more time than not, let Kyle do what he do versus him. And may the best man win on each individual play. And then you, you know, run your different kind of zone stuff with that. And that's the only way I think you can get him. Because, like I said, watching, like, all these different games versus Kelsey and doing the research for this, again, zone coverage, he's a menace. And he's tough, tough, tough to stop because him and Pat's on the same page versus whatever, whatever zone you throw out there. Even if you try to disguise the stuff, they're tough to, to stop. So I think we need to, you know, Unleash man coverage versus Kelsey. And whatever he gets versus the man, so be it. But if, if long as those catches are contested catches and nothing quick, easy, and simple, we just live with the consequences and be what it is. So that's my two cents. Tell me what you guys think about that um, ideal of trying to contain Kelsey because you cannot stop him. And um, put that in the comment section. And this is Coach Evans with another episode of Sip the Tally Films. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you want to really help the channel, Take a link to this, put it on your social medias so the rest of the people that are not here can see it. And again, Thursday night is on. See you when I see you. Peace.